Hey, what's up guys? Zero here. Welcome back to Let's Play RuneScape. Uh, we're checking out World Event 2 today. We've got Bandos and Armadil, and they're tied up in a fight to the death. It was interesting that Jagex decided to kind of leak that information to us before the event started. I guess they really wanted to be clear that our decisions in this event were going to be different. They had consequences. But normally the important details about how a story will develop, how it will end even, these are things that we learn about in the story, in the game, that give the story value, right? So it was interesting they did it that way. Um, and obviously the, the player base is pretty divided. Some people are saying, don't kill the gods. Some people are like, don't kill them yet. They just got here. And then other people are like, hey, if you're going to be killing some gods, well, I got a few in mind, you know, <laughs> let's get started. Um, my take on it is just that Jagex has been developing this story for more than a decade, you know? This has been a long time coming, and the players are really invested in this story, in the gods, right? So I think it's important to make that investment count. Let's have it pay off in a big way, you know? I think if they make the most of it and tell the kind of stories that fit this content, that everybody's going to be really happy and it's going to have a lasting impact. So that's what I'm hoping for, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can see I've picked Armadil's side here. It's temporary, I'm going to switch. Not too crazy about the stories these guys have to say. So like uh, Bandos's view is that, um, you know, the only thing that matters is power, right? And the way that we determine who is most powerful is through violence. So let's have a war, right? And we'll fight to the death and we'll find out who the most powerful god is, right? But if the way to resolve differences, the way to resolve disputes, right, is through violence, then you would never argue your case. Because whatever reasons and evidence you presented, someone could just come along and violently oppose them, knock you over the head and say, nope, you're wrong and I'm right, you know? That would be the sensible way for Bandos to actually, you know, conduct himself if he believed what he says is the case so and, and it's interesting because armadil is actually doing what bandos should do just kill everyone that opposes him right what armadil is saying is let's you know strive for a peaceful world where people have freedom but everybody who opposes that view needs to be murdered immediately right starting with bandos and all of his followers well that doesn't make sense either right because he is you know, resolving disputes with violence. Oh, this guy is talking to me. Uh, hi. So what Armadil should really say is pretty simple. He should say that Bandos is trying to kill me and I have a right to protect myself. And in fact, if we band together as a group, we can work together to make sure that, that he can't kill us, that his followers aren't going to be able to kill us. And because it looks like Bandos isn't going to stop, we might have to kill him. That would be a consistent view for Armadil. And then his perspective would make sense. You know? That'd be smart. So, I don't know. We'll see. And, and that's probably going to be a common thing. I, I was pretty critical of the, uh, the other views of the gods. And we'll just see how it develops. Um, we've got some other stuff here. These symbols written on the obelisks, right? The first time I ever saw this was in the Tsar library. And they were written on these orbs. I don't think anyone would blame me for thinking that that was kind of like the Tsar language, right? But then it started showing up other places. All of a sudden it was outside Nex's uh, God Wars dungeon. And it was written on the chandelier in there. And next follows Zaros, so we got a totally different god, and that was in the second, third age, the God Wars, right? Totally different. And then it showed up again in the Wizard's Tower, which is Saradomen, and we're talking like fourth and fifth age. Um, so totally different time period again, different god, same symbols. And then it showed up in player ports. So we're talking late fifth age, we're finding this stuff from the eastern lands, totally different places. We don't even know which gods. Maybe it'll turn out to be like Tuska, or who knows, maybe Sliske snuck over there and convinced everyone to follow him, right? Um, I don't know, but again, same symbols, different places. 
And now here they are in the sixth age with Armadil. So when I see that, I think that you know, it's like we've got this thing, it's kind of universal, it's really old. Maybe it's older than all of those things. It makes me think of the Elder Gods. So maybe these symbols somehow represent the Elder Gods. Maybe, you know, oh, what's going on? I'm getting crazy lag. Here we go. Um, and, and maybe this is something they created, their power. I mean, each of these symbols might actually represent an Elder God. There seems to be four of them. Are there four Elder Gods? I think there might be. The math, it adds up, right? So that's cool. I think it's interesting. Another thing going on, we're using divine energy in this event. Uh, in the first event, we used Tears of Guthix, and we kind of hacked them out of the ground. It was very, you know, ruthless, right? And we gave them to the gods, and they used that energy directly to power themselves. And the gods like to gain power. That seems to be all they ever do. The only time they ever talk about doing something good is when it happens to coincide with them gaining power. I'm actually interested to see if one of the gods will ever choose to do the right thing when it means not gaining power or even losing power. And in the case of Guthix, maybe that's what he did, but uh, we see this divine energy, right? It's being used to power up an item in this case, uh, this divine focus. It's like some type of tech, right? Which is really cool. I mean, is there something about divine energy that we don't know that maybe only the players can decide how it's used? and that the gods can't use it directly. I think that could be pretty cool. Um, and if so, I mean, maybe that's why Guthix died. Maybe he figured out that, that the power that the gods have is somehow inherently evil. And so in his death, he used his energy to create something that couldn't be manipulated by the gods directly, that the players had to choose how it would be used. And I think that could be pretty interesting too. I mean, you know, Armadil says that he wants the gods and other beings to live peacefully, right? But if it turns out that the only way the gods became powerful in the first place is by murdering people and starting wars and destroying worlds and stealing that power, right? If that's how they became powerful, would you want to live next to that guy? And just get along? I don't know. I think, I think that I would consider them to be kind of evil and I wouldn't want them to be around them. So that's kind of weird. Uh, but, you know, what is this divine focus? Is it just a big hunk of rock that somebody pulled out of the ground and carved up nice and, you know, all of a sudden it can accept divine energy? Or is there something more to this? I don't know. But uh, we've seen other pieces of rock capable of absorbing power. Um, the rocks around the Stone of Jass. You know, the Stone of Jass is so powerful that it leaks power. And it leaked into the, the stone around it. That's how we got Rune Essence. So what if it turned out that this big rock was a giant piece of rune essence that was absorbing divine energy? That would tell us something about rune essence that we didn't know, that it could be used in combination with, you know, some type of divine energy, which I think is pretty cool. So lots to think about. But as far as these symbols, you know, Jagex has been really tight-lipped about it. And at some point, those symbols have to have a fu like a functional significance. Otherwise, people aren't going to care about them. You know, if they come to represent the gods, if that's their symbols, that might be one way. But, uh, you know, if they keep showing up in these important places and we never know what they're for, uh, eventually people are just going to ignore them. Uh, same story with these charts. You know, they show up in the, um, the wizard's tower and then they're here again. Uh, they appear to be completely meaningless, right? If they continue to be that way, they'll just look like fancy wallpaper and nobody's going to care. So at some point, that's got to change. But uh, besides that, we've got a really interesting event going on here. I'm interested to see how it all breaks down. Um, and I'm getting frame lag again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you know what? I'm just going to leave it there. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you later.